Hello guys, happy Wednesday. It's Courtney again with King Realty and Management. I don't know if you can tell, but I got a new phone yesterday and like this video is giving me life. It's been a while since I've been live and as you guys know in 2020, I'm kind of switching up um, my strategy in terms of marketing. Plus, if you have not yet heard, I have a new book out. It's called Millennial vs. Machine how I got someone else to pay off my student loan debt, and how you can do the same. Um, it is available on Amazon, uh, paperback, Kindle, Audible, and we've got a podcast that is produced by King Realty called the Millennial vs. Machine Podcast. So um, in the comments below, just as I'm done with this video, I will tag um, the link to the podcast and the book and all of that good stuff. So today we're talking about creative ways to finance the purchase of a property. Um, and this actually goes along the lines of what I teach in Millennial versus Machine. Um, and so some people out there may not be able to qualify for traditional financing, meaning you go to the bank um, or you go to a traditional mortgage broker and you say, hey, I wanna buy this house, okay? Um, some of the reasons why you may not qualify is maybe your debt to income ratios are too high, um, maybe your credit score isn't high enough. Um, there's a, a few different variables as to why you couldn't get uh, financed traditionally, but there's a creative way that I have personally used actually um, in the past and it's owner financing or seller financing. And so that's where if you are purchasing a home, you basically um, are, basically the seller is the bank, okay? So it's, unconventional per se, where the actual current owner of the property that you're buying acts as the bank for you. So let's just talk a little bit about what that looks like and you know what you need to be aware of um, before you make that leap. The reason why I'm doing this video is most of my videos is produced by questions that clients and prospective clients ask me all day every day. So I do have one client in particular that asked me this question because she is actually interested in um, building her rental portfolio. She already has properties, um, but she's considering this as an option to um, add the properties to her portfolio. So I'm going to look at my notes a little bit. Uh, so a couple of things with owner financing, um, they're a little bit more flexible when it comes to the required credit score. But because of that, they're also likely going to ask for more of a down payment. When I say more of a down payment, you know, some of these owners, and it depends on the price point, they may request 20% down. I've seen people request 30% down. Um, sometimes they may only request 10% down. All of that is negotiable. But keep in mind that because there's a little bit more risk to the actual seller that is financing this property for you, you're gonna be paying more um, in interest, okay? So like right now, um, with a conventional loan, with a conventional or traditional lender, um, you're paying anywhere from, you know, three and a half up to maybe five, five and a half percent, right? But if you are purchasing a property owner finance, I've seen eight, nine percent, I mean, 12 percent, you know? So just keep in mind that because um, of the risk that that owner uh, carries by doing this with you, then you're gonna be paying more in interest. But that leads me to my next question, uh, my next comment is, while you may start off and you purchase the property using owner financing to start, you can always refinance, okay? I'm not gonna get into the nuts and bolts of the note that you sign with the owner. All of it's negotiable, um, but typically there's no prepayment penalties. So that means that, let's say you purchase the property owner finance, you're at 9% interest, and then some things change up and you are allowed to get a traditional mortgage, you can refinance, let's say at three, four, 5% interest, save that money in interest, pay off the, uh, the owner that financed the property for you, and now you have a traditional mortgage. So you can do that, okay? Um, oftentimes, and this is a little bit hard because every owner finance transaction is a little bit different, but I think it's wise to only do owner finance with a owner that actually owns the property outright. Here's why. If you are paying that owner your monthly mortgage payment 
and they're pocketing the money and they're not paying the actual mortgage that they have in place, you're screwed. <laughs> because the prime, primary mortgage that the owner currently has may go into default if they're not paying and then they end up foreclosing on the property and you get zero, like point blank period. So you kind of want to be cautious when it comes to that, okay? Um, in some cases, what they'll do is they'll do a wraparound mortgage. So the current owner of the property has a mortgage and then you come and they own or finance the property to you in very simple kind of basic terms, then basically they wrap your mortgage around the current mortgage that they have. And oftentimes the owner that's doing the owner financing wants to make that extra um, money in interest. But sometimes you may be able to just assume their payment, you know, um, if you do that, that's better because you're paying the mortgage company directly. So it kind of minimizes your risk. But, and this is a big but, that even stopped a deal from, from going forward with me personally, is let's say you're about to pay off the loan and there's a wrap. Well, when you do that, and let's say you're gonna sell the home later, right? You know, to get everything paid off, that original owner has to sign a release. So if for some reason that original owner and you have a wraparound mortgage is fell off the face of the earth and you can't find them, potentially that may prevent you from selling the house. I'm just saying, and that's a big, big deal, right? So I uh, purchased two properties in Houston, probably 2016, 17-ish, and I did owner financing. I actually bought them from a client and I also had a personal relationship with his mortgage holder. So what ended up happening is there was a lot less risk for me because I was paying the mortgage company directly. And sure enough, when I sold the properties like a year, year and a half later, they signed the release and I was good to go. But if you are dealing with owner financing with a complete stranger, you really, really want to be careful of that, okay? Um, Let's see, that's pretty much it. I feel like that that gets you started. If you have any uh, particular questions, if you are buying a property and you want to go the owner financing route, definitely comment below, shoot me a uh, message, um, or visit our website, kingrealtytx.com. On the flip side, if you are a homeowner and you want to sell your home owner financing, which I'm gonna do a whole nother video about that, the, the pros and cons of that, because there are some benefits there um, and some income that you get to produce if you go that route. So um, if you are a, a homeowner that wants to sell their property owner finance, then definitely reach out to me, uh, visit kingrealtytx.com, uh, send me a DM, I'd love to help. Um, there's so many different options and um, I just wanna make sure that you're equipped with the information that you need to make the best decision for you. Um, visit CourtneyMKing.com for all things Millennial versus Machine podcast, all of that, or visit KingRealTTX.com. Uh, don't forget to share, um, like. If you have anybody that's uh, that you know that's considering selling their home owner financing or buying a home owner financing, just tag them. Sharing is caring, guys. Hope you guys have a great rest of the day. I'll be back tomorrow or potentially Friday to talk on the flip side of that because that idea just came to mind and I wanna make sure that you sellers are also um, well informed. So enjoy the rest of your day. I'll talk to you later.